high mass main sequence stars, the the evolution of stars. All right, we see a picture of this down here. We also had our mnemonic that we had in our first week of school where we had the nebula cloud which flattened down into a pizza with gravy. It flattens down into a flat disk like a pizza due to gravity. And in the center of that that pizza was a proto which is the protostar that will form in the center of it. And of course, that protostar belonged to Patrick, which is a true star. But Patrick had the friction sticks on his, on his hands. He's rubbing them together. That protostar heats up due to friction. And then he had a, a, a hydrogen bomb on his head. And he, he had the sticks rubbing together on top of it. And of course, the, it heats up due to friction until nuclear fusion begins. And then it becomes a true star like Patrick. Patrick, of course, is a sea star on SpongeBob. And so it's a true star, and that's where it spends most of its life. That's called a main sequence star. So we have our nebula cloud flattens. There's a protostar that forms in the middle of it. And then it heats up due to friction until nuclear fusion begins. And then it becomes a true star. And depending on the size of it, it's either going to be an average size star or a high mass star. Now, these take different paths because of their size. Both of them will run out of hydrogen at some point. And that's what they call leaving the main sequence. And so when they run out of hydrogen, if we remember back to our mnemonic, uh, we had the hydrogen bomb exploding and going off in two directions because we had our average size star and we had our large star. The average size star, it went over and popped a helium balloon because that's when we start to fuse helium that belonged to Clifford the Big Red Dog. And so this would be a red giant. When helium starts to fuse, it burns a little bit hotter in the fusion process and so that star expands the outer skin does and it forms a red giant and then we had Clifford that was burping onto a potted plant that had a little garden gnome or a white dwarf in the middle of it well what happens is that outer skin starts to drift away into space and we call that burping away the outer skin and in the middle of this is called a planetary nebula in the middle of that planetary nebula uh, is going to be your white dwarf. There's your little white dwarf right there. And so that's the former core of the star. It's in the middle of that planetary nebula. Uh, this is called a planetary. It has nothing to do with planets. It was only called that because when we first started, telescopes had gotten good enough to see them. Uh, we had just discovered Uranus and Neptune, and these planetary nebulas glowed. Uh, some of them had bluish green tints to them that kind of looked like Uranus and Neptune. The large stars, they would be the other path. They also start to fuse helium, and so we had the, the bomb going off and a, hitting the another helium balloon, but this belonged to Superman. Uh, Superman, of course, wears the colors red and blue, so these would be red and blue super giants. And then Superman was also carrying around in his right arm a Chevy Nova, which had Jimmy Neutron in it hooked up to a pulse machine. And so these guys, they also get big, but when they, when they die at the end, they don't gently burp away their skin. They're so big, gravity pulls them back in and they bounce off that core. And when they bounce off the core, it's such with uh, such tremendous force that the electrons and protons are smashed together. And when you take a positive and a negative and smash them together, they form a neutron, a neutral object. And so they will bounce off and explode in a supernova. And the center of that supernova is going to be a neutron star. That's what we see right here. That's what would be in the middle of the supernova. Even bigger stars can form black holes because they will try to bounce off and form a, a supernova, but there's just so much mass and gravity there that when they do try to bounce, uh, gravity's too great and it pulls it back in into a singularity known as a black hole. So if we're looking at the high mass stars, that would be this bottom sequence down here, we're not going to form red giants. Red giants are like Clifford the Big Red Dog up here. All right? But we will form red and blue super giants. So we'll put a check mark right there. Um, we don't have white dwarfs. Again, that's going to be our low mass stars. Um, we don't have planetary nebulas. They're up the top too. These don't gently burp away. They explode. But we can have neutron stars and black holes. These two are on the high mass star chain down here. So again, we got the red and blue supergiants, the neutron stars, and the black holes. All the rest of them would be average or sun-like stars.